Chapter 7 Country Living Daddy served us proud Red, white, and blue And if he was here today He'd tell you to Cause we can Dan managed my first ever endorsement deal for one of the first e-cigarette companies called SafeSig. Around that time, the guys from Lizard Lick hit me up about doing their theme song. They were big fans of Hick Life, so we did a similar rendition called Lick Life and shot a video with the cast. Not too long after that, I got a call from an executive named Chris Stacy. At the time, he was head of Warner Nashville's radio department. Similar to John Rich, Chris was on the lake with his buddies when they stumbled across Kicking It in Tennessee on YouTube and loved it. He commented, Yo, this video is dope. I'm Chris Stacy from Warner Nashville. I responded back, Yo, what's happening? This is Smo. He invited me to lunch and later listened to more of my music. He believed I had real talent and was one of the first people in the industry to have my back. Later on, when he was leaving Warner and I was trying to get signed, he still rooted for me and made it happen with Chris Lacey, head of A&R. Oh, Chris Stacy and Chris Lacey, tons of thanks for seeing my potential. And I'm so thankful that he reached out to me that day. I told Dan about the meeting, so he contacted head of A&R, Chris Lacey. He told her to check my work out, and that kicked off our relationship at Warner. All the excitement motivated me to work even harder on our new project, Country Living. It had been a decade since I had released Country Kitchen. John Connor and O'Rig were the producers, and we worked really well together. JC and O'Rig made an excellent team. John Connor We were out on the road every weekend. During the week, we worked on music. Smo's manager told us Warner Nashville was interested in what we were doing and wanted to make sure our music was top-notch. So that really lit a fire to know people were paying attention and listening to what we were doing. And to me, it raised the stakes in the studio. Coming from an East Coast background, I had a certain idea and sound in mind, which was super hard drums and percussion with these dobros and fiddles and banjos. And just the juxtaposition of both of those to me was really cool. Ray Riddle. I loved looking at the reaction from the crowd when I would spin a new song. I also love getting to hang out with the fans and just spending time with the ones you make the music for. John Connor We were doing everything ourselves, from videos to socials, the website, booking the live shows, everything was done by five or six guys. On the road, Smo let Alex King and me hold down the hype man positions. He created this really cool dynamic on stage. I held down one side and Alex the other. As a producer, it was awesome to see the fans react to the music, then go back into the studio and say, oh, if they like that, they're going to love this. Ray Riddle When Smo finally got that opportunity with Warner, that's when John and I dove into the studio head first and spent literally 13 hours a day for a couple of years, really testing ourselves in so many ways. We're very self-motivated and overachievers, so by the time the big guys came into our lane, we had so much to offer. JC and Alex were really into the visual side of the music. We had already done the video for Kick Mud together, and it was doing so well that we decided to film a mini-series that we aired on YouTube at the same time every week. We called it Country Living, which was also the name of the album. We were getting a lot of positive feedback on the music videos, so we thought filming a behind-the-scenes approach about life on tour and the farm would be entertaining. It was the precursor to the reality show, and we got a lot of views and comments. I'm thankful to have those now because they're almost like a video diary during a great time in my career. John Connor We shot more videos, created more buzz, released behind-the-scenes videos, most of which I shot, and gigging on the weekends, building the buzz louder and louder. To this date, one of my favorite songs on the album is Working. It's one of my favorites to perform, and it's definitely a number one fan request. We were working our asses off, and it just came to us that our kinfolk need an anthem to get us up and go into our jobs. I've had so many awesome experiences because of that song, like getting to do a lip-sync video with the Murfreesboro Fire and Police Departments. 
Everyone has to work in some sort of way to get by, and we wanted to provide the soundtrack for that. I never imagined it would be as big as it is today. Relapse. I did some work for hire, riding on working, all four of us, Smo, John Connor, Alex King, and I. We passed around a notebook for a couple of hours and took turns writing lines. It was pretty cool. He made my lyrics sound real good. I would have to say Country Living was the most fun album to work on. Now, don't get me wrong. Every album has been rewarding in its own way, both educationally and just a good time. But back in them country living days, we weren't just starving artists anymore, and we had just enough recognition that we were respected. The ball was still totally in our court, and we were eager to have all those opportunities back then. It was a really cool time in my career. One of the most memorable writing sessions from that album was working on Bumpy Road with Red Akins and his son, Thomas Rhett. This was before Thomas was who he is now. So to me, I just looked at it like a father-son writing session. Now I look back and think of how cool it was that we didn't know what success was in store for me or Thomas Rhett just a few years down the road. Rhett Akins. I think I went out to Smo's farm two or three times to write, and Thomas Rhett went once. But the day Thomas Rhett and I went, we both loved it because it was one of those deals where anything goes. A lot of times, in any genre, you have to pretty much stick to the script when you're writing a song. But with Big Smo, he didn't care what we wrote, as long as we loved it and thought it was great. It was just a really great time to be with your son, who loves rap music as much as you do, and as much as Smo and those guys do. But they also love Hank Jr. and Aerosmith, and we could just put all our ingredients that everybody had into one big pot and make a song. We were writing, but we were also playing a game of skeet ball, where I'd hit the golf balls with a driver, and they'd shoot them with a shotgun. Rhett Akins. It was a lot of fun. While O'Rig and John Connor were in there working on what we'd done, Smo, Thomas, and I went outside and invented this little game, kind of like shooting skeet golf style. So Smo was driving golf balls off the tee, and we'd shoot them with a shotgun. It was basically everything Smo does on a regular basis. But my wild side got to come out in everything on that trip, from shooting guns to writing whatever we felt like writing. Everything was going really well. And we were still working really hard on country living. We were in communication with Warner, but still trying to see what all was going to happen. It was an exciting time for us back then. Shannon Houchins. I went to the CMT Awards and was backstage. Peter Strickland from Warner Brothers was there and Chris Stacy, and they grabbed me and said, Hey, we need to talk to you. Have you heard of Big Smo? I was like, yeah, he's great. They said, well, we're thinking about signing him and want to know what you think. I told them I think you guys should sign him, so I encouraged them to do it. Average Joes had kind of become the authority on how to sell country rap, so they wanted to ask me. I told them definitely do it, so I like to think I had a little bit of a hand in helping that happen. We got the call that Warner wanted to talk, so we invited them to the farm. We wanted to show them what we were capable of in our own studio. We were doing well for ourselves on the road by now, we were booking some awesome gigs and had a lot of momentum with our first CMA Fest and Bama Jam performances. These guys knew that we were working really hard, but we wanted them to see it with their own eyes. I was so proud to walk the executives into the studio right on the porch where we shot the artwork for Country Kitchen. Hell, we basically lived in that studio for years, and it was awesome to finally have the chance to show off all the hard work to these people in the industry. It's what we had dreamed of since we were kids. Ray Riddle. We had Warner Brothers Nashville's president and 20 Sony and APA executives all crammed in the country kitchen. Just to have that moment was huge. So far, nothing has trumped that yet. Smo would go to a meeting and would come back without CDs because everyone at the label wanted them for themselves. They seemed to really like what we were doing. My favorite reaction is always, you guys made all of this music out of this little shack? John Connor. We met with the label when they came out to his farm in Unionville, including the president, John Esposito. We put on a performance, and then we all headed into the studio. Dan turned the meeting over to me, and it was my turn to show the Warner Brothers Records Nashville staff all the hard work we had done. We get about three records in, and Espo was dancing around the studio saying, We're going to be rich! Everybody loved what we played, and that night was so surreal to me. It was a realization of a lot of childhood dreams, and we were all hyped up. The night ended, and we were all reflecting around the bonfire, and all I could say was, wow. 
the energy around that time was just amazing. We were doing killer shows, then coming home during the week to head back into the studio. It was just this pressure that I loved and fed off of, knowing the label was listening to everything we were making, and it just put this awesome vibe in the studio. Dan Nelson After that meeting out at Smo's farm, I remember sitting there with Smo and the heads of all the different departments. The last negotiating point I really left on the table was, look, if you guys are signing Smo to change him into something else, we will respectfully pass because we like who he is and what he's doing and we think there's a future there. And Espo and the whole team just said, nope, we get it and we love who he is. We just want to help make him a household name. We got the offer a few days after that meeting and I remember I called him super excited from LA. I told him, dude, you're going to be the first country rapper ever signed to a major label ever. Do you know what that means? You made history. The most awesome experience during country living was getting to write with so many different artists. Darius Rucker and I did my place together, which was absolutely surreal. I had been a Hootie fan for years. We were able to have a writing session on his tour bus, and then he appeared on the TV show later. Spoiler alert, I met Casey Beathard back during the country living days. I'm always amazed anytime I get to work with Casey. Little did I know back then we would write several hits together. Another writer I'd like to give credit to is Bobby Pinson, because together we wrote one of my all-time favorites, Redneck Rich. I've been so fortunate to meet all these talented writers I've got to work with over the years. Because I had signed a publishing deal with Sony ATV, we got to record all the live instrumentation at Sony Studio A. This was my first time getting to work on a project in a really nice Nashville studio. All of our instruments before had been sampled, with the exception of a guitar or harmonica here and there, so this was also the first time I saw a full band play and record live. I told the guys the kind of vibe I wanted for Laudy Laudy. I said, think BTO's taking care of business. They were like, oh, sure, easy. So here was this guy, JD, on guitar, Rich Redmond, who toured drumming for Jason Aldean, and Peter Keys, the keyboardist for Leonard Skinner. They just started jamming, and it was absolutely incredible. I remember being blown away. That's one of my favorite memories of recording Country Living. My last task to finish the album was to create the artwork for the album cover. Since the studio had been the launch pad for all of our dreams, I decided to pay homage to my country kitchen cover and use the studio as my backdrop for Country Living. I designed the artwork with Tony Delano, a.k.a. Ebb Tight who did the photography and graphics. I love that my old dog Jade is on the cover gnawing on a big old bone. She was so happy that day. Country Living was finally ready. After the months of recording, photo shoots, filming, writing, touring, and definitely not much sleep, we sent everything off and waited. It was much like lighting the fuse on that bomb and waiting to see what happened to the Pepsi machine. I didn't know for sure what was going to happen, but I hoped it would blow up. Well, sure enough, it did. Country Living released on June 3rd, 2014, and within the next week, Billboard magazine said we were number nine on the top 10 country music album charts and number three on the rap charts. I finally felt like everything was worth it. I remember when I had to have faith in this dream and pursue it full time. Looking back on the Country Living days, I know that I made the right choice to believe in myself. I felt so accomplished with all of our hard work, and we felt even better now that the world was paying attention. 